In the course of creating content for this channel over the last seven years, I have made many videos on the question of are we alone? This is perhaps the most profound question that can be asked, because either way, yes or no, the implications are among the greatest possible factors defining the human condition. But the question in my head goes back much further than YouTube, as a kid looking up to the stars and wondering if there might be anyone out there. This of course is a question that may never be answered because the only way to answer it is if the answer is in the positive. We would need to find evidence of other intelligent beings in the universe to know. And this most likely can find anything that may exist in our home galaxy, not so much beyond it. On the contrary, a definitive no, we are indeed alone, is impossible to ever determine. Because not only do we stand very low chances of ever seeing life evident in another galaxy even if it's there, we are also confined to looking at only relatively nearby galaxies, with much of the population being too distant, not only in space, but time. We see galaxies as they were, most before they could have possibly spawned life in a galaxy-spanning civilization, encasing all their stars and Dyson spheres. For our own galaxy, it remains silent. We see no definitive evidence of the presence of an alien civilization. There are candidates, typically fleeting and not very good, but all are still ambiguous. So in the end, all we know is that we are not impossible. Therefore, alien life is not impossible. My own suspicion is that intelligent life is simply very rare, but far from unique. A galaxy may spawn microbial life everywhere. It might be ubiquitous across the universe, but complex life, less so. Just the idea that the universe is a place largely of microbial life answers my question, however. One alien microbe detection, say from Mars, the atmosphere of Venus, or the numerous ice shell moons and Kuiper Belt objects, or even fossils in a meteorite, is enough for me to say we are not alone. Rather, life on Earth is not alone. I find something beautiful about a universe teeming with microbial life, but only rarely anything else. This is why I have followed the search for that so intensely. Beyond the world of simple life, it's harder. It may be that things like dinosaurs, cows, crocodiles, and goldfish are organisms of a complexity uncommon in the universe. Not unique, though their individual species would be. But complex life may require the passage of too many evolutionary, environmental, and biological hurdles to make it scarce. Here we'd very likely need to go to another star system to find something we could call an alien animal. They do not appear to be present here other than the Earth. Though finding some analog of a fish in the ocean of Europa or a similar world is on the table still for the solar system. Civilizations may be that much more rare, only occasionally appearing in any given galaxy. We may be alone in the Milky Way. An even rarer circumstance is that intelligent life might exist at the same time as another civilization in their home galaxy. Civilizations would not be mere ships passing in the night without contact but ships passing the same place a billion years apart. There can be no contact in such a situation, other than if an artifact or some evidence were left from one civilization to another. This might lead to a tombstone universe, where first contact between civilizations comes in the form of the archaeologist's excavation. Rarer still may be Earth's, and this may define just what intelligence in the universe does. If this planet were just a bit further away from the sun, it would be an ice shell planet. The oceans would exist through geothermal heating, but there would be no accessible surface. This kind of world is represented in part by Earth. There are environments, vibrant ones, existing under the sea ice of the Arctic and Antarctica. Indeed, Earth itself is hypothesized to have gone through periods of such glaciation that most of the world was once covered in ice. Yet here we are, despite our very situational planet. But let's envision something more permanent. A world the size of Earth that spawns life and intelligence, but it remains locked under the ice and unable to even perceive that there is a cosmos out there. Their idea of the universe may be confined entirely to their ocean, and they never become aware that there is anything more. That may make detectable alien civilizations that much rarer than intelligence itself which could also be rare. 
As a result, air breathing, land dwelling technological species like our own may be orders of magnitude rarer than intelligence in general. From the perspective of science, being rare is alright, but being unique is very unlikely. Anything that can happen in the universe, including our own civilization, very likely has counterparts, given the overwhelming odds that stand against being alone. Being alone instantly catapults us back to something like the worldview of Aristotle. While we may not be physically at the center of the universe as he thought, we are at that point functionally the center of the universe, the only place in the cosmos where the universe can study itself. But being rare may just be how it is. Air-breathing technological land civilizations that go to space just may be so rare that we have no hope of ever detecting one, and within that notion there is something else. Something that may be universal to all civilizations, rare though they might be. It's the question of whether civilizations in similar circumstances to our own might look to the stars and ask the same question we do. Are we alone? As a result, this may mean that the Fermi Paradox itself is a universal common denominator among civilizations capable of astronomy, and that no one across the universe ever answers the question. This however may be unlikely, because while being alone at any given time in a galaxy is plausible, less so is the idea that out of the potentially several trillion galaxies present in the observable universe, not one has ever seen two civilizations coexisting and interacting within it. Does some alien being sit on the sandy shores of a liquid water ocean, on an astonishingly distant exoplanet in another galaxy entirely, looking to the stars, given that it has the anatomy of vision, and wonder if it is indeed alone, without ever knowing that we are here? I have often said that we represent someone else's alien civilization, but it seems a shame that given that we are here, there is a good chance that no one else will ever know. All of humanity's hopes, dreams, artwork, music, and everything good and bad about us may be forever confined to our own existence on our one tiny world. The alien that would be most curious about such things may never have a chance to know us, nor will we know them. A somewhat melancholy and sad universe, to be sure. Such civilizations and us would forever wrestle with the concept that while we would all self-prove that intelligence is possible, we would never be able to prove it wasn't a fluke. Or could we? The science of studying abiogenesis can go one of two ways, should it ever fully understand the process. Life's genesis will either turn out very difficult, some chemical stumbling blocks such as the creation of DNA may prove very difficult and situational, or the whole thing will prove straightforward and easy, a direction that field is currently heading. If it's easier, then we can infer that microbes are everywhere in the universe, if it's not, then they aren't. And that provides an independent way of answering the question of, is Earth's life alone? We could find it drilling into an ice shell moon, or sampling the upper atmosphere of Venus, or we might find it popping out of a test tube in a lab. Two ways to find out, both of which could happen within decades. Aliens may do similar experiments and reach the same conclusions, giving at least some insight on life in the universe at large if not how often, it achieves intelligence. But that question may too be answerable in time, even without a detection. With a greater and ever-increasing understanding of genetics and environments, it may become possible to model how evolution progresses and achieves intelligence. We could conceivably come up with a reasonable estimate on just how likely it is, but doing so now is fraught with too many unknowns. Aliens might have done this, however and concluded that they may well be alone, or that it's statistically impossible to be alone, thus they get something close to an answer. But it's never definitive. Unless of course they discover or we prove that the universe is infinite in extent, in which case it becomes virtually impossible to be alone. And it doesn't matter if you'd never find it, you simply know that it must be there. But it also pays to remember that the universe is young and has only had so many chances for intelligent life to occur. That it occurred here took billions of years. Maybe for most other exoplanets it takes far longer. But time is on their side. The red dwarfs, for example, have trillions of years left to live. And star formation and the coalescing of planetary systems is still occurring very commonly in a huge number of galaxies. In other words, it may not be possible to answer the question right now. 
but in the future, as the universe has more time to develop, it may become possible. In short, we, and any alien civilization out there, are simply too early to answer our common question, are we alone? One could be tempted to call this model the Fermi Paradox Universe, and while not a solution to the paradox, it would represent a common denominator and a way to begin to envision the alien mind. Of course, this assumes that aliens behave like we do, which is an enormous whopper of an assumption. It may be that some alien civilizations never ask the question, because they simply don't care if they are alone. They may inherit from their evolution no capacity to worry about that. Rather, they are reactive, searching only for their fellow members of their species for reproduction, if even that. And everything else is a predator or food. This is how most species on Earth exist. They do not wonder about aliens as we do. Indeed, they have no conception of such a thing. Certainly there is curiosity among the animals, that isn't rare on Earth by any means. But what form does curiosity take? In humans, we needed to know the concept of aliens before we contemplated them, and realized they were possible. Before then, other intelligences were certainly contemplated, but they were of a supernatural flavor rather than alien. And there are the machines. An advanced artificial intelligence may not be the least bit curious about biological alien life. Maybe that is where the true rarity lies. Humans are rare because they ask the question. Others may not, or they might. And perhaps that's how alien life is. Unless they run into you, then the paradox itself is meaningless. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently worried about my alien counterpart, Glorcon the highly perplexed and concerned, making hypertube videos on his home world regarding Grokton the ample brained's alien paradox. Very unsettling, especially for me. And be sure to check out my books, new one coming soon, at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.